Sightings of the believed to be extinct Tasmanian tiger have been recently reported across the untouched forests of Tasmania. We're heading to Tasmania at the moment, attempting to track down the thylacine. I believe there's a small population of them living in the unexplored rainforests. Let's try to find one. What's going on legends? Welcome back to another video. So we have made it to Tasmania today. Now this is a place I've been wanting to visit for so long. I'm so happy I'm here, mainly because of this land. It's so untouched, but also the animals that live on it. Weird, rare, amazing, and even supposedly extinct. The Tasmanian tiger is why we're here. These Tasmanian tigers, also known as thylacines, used to live all the way from Tasmania up the east coast of Australia and even into Papua New Guinea. But after dying out on the mainland, the last stronghold for them was in the forests of Tasmania. But I believe it's very possible that there's a small population of these Tasmanian tigers that live here on this land. And that's what we're gonna be searching for for the next week. So what we're gonna do first, to get a lay of the land, we're gonna get in a helicopter search around see if we can find a place that we could find these Tasmanian tigers way out there in the wilderness let's go Some of these places that we're flying over at the moment are so remote that how could you know that there's no Tasmanian tigers that still live out here if people aren't going out there to this day? I don't know, I'm going into this very open-minded trying to find one of these guys because I think that's what you have to do when you're looking for a species that's supposedly not here anymore. But yeah, it's pretty fun and there's a lot of other animals that we're gonna see after we get off this chopper ride. But we've seen some cool ground that I reckon we're gonna try to hike to later on in the day. But yeah, how cool is that? So I don't know a lot about these animals. Matter of fact, up until this point, I didn't even know how to pronounce their name right. So I decided to speak to someone who knows a bit more about thylacines than I do. So I met up with my mate and fellow YouTuber, Rob Parsons, who's done expeditions looking for these tigers before to get a bit of a better understanding about these animals. You can find him at Rob Parsons on YouTube. So what do you know about the Tasmanian tiger? The Tasmanian tiger, I know that it's a very sought out animal. Uh, everybody in the world wants it to exist. It was a marsupial with a backwards facing pouch, um, kind of dog-like, a little bit wolf-like as well. Had some stripes on its back and it may still be around. So the main reason why I got in contact with you is because I saw your expedition to the southwest of Tassie looking yeah. for these Tasmanian tigers. Well, I mean, the southwest has always been to me the, the most likely spot that they would exist because they were there before they were hunted to extinction and nothing has really changed in the area ever since. Like there's no real roads that have gone in there. There's hardly um, 
any activity. There was a little bit of logging activity, but in general, like the place is relatively the same as, as how, how it always has been. Basically, they were considered a pest. So in around the time that the settlers were coming in and clearing land, they had livestock and they were losing livestock. And the thylacines were blamed. Now there's a theory that it was wild dogs who were taking it and the thylacines weren't really coming in. But regardless, they had a bounty put out on them. One pound at the time was about a month's salary for every thylacine captured alive or dead. So you can imagine in these hard times in Tasmania when they're just getting settled, they, they say you can earn a month's salary for one thylacine. Everyone was running for the hills. They were yeah. setting up snares, traps, anything. Because there was guys coming in with multiple thylacines it was, a, it was a business. And 12 thylacines is a whole year's wage. Whole year's wage, yeah. yeah it's so crazy. You get a mom and four cubs, mm. pups. Um, you know, that's half a year nearly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they were hunted very heavily. And you had uh, the one that they named Benjamin in 1936, who sadly died in the Bomaris Zoo down in Hobart. And they never saw one after that. There were three state funded expeditions, two in 1937 and one in 1938. And these were with state troopers, like police officers. Looking for these tigers. Looking for the tigers, yeah. And they were basing it off reports from prospectors, um, from uh, piners, people who spend and earn their living in remote areas in Tasmania. Because they were coming back from these places and saying, hey, we are seeing tigers, they are still out there. And this is where they based those expeditions. So when they did these expeditions, did they find anything? They never saw a live one, but they did get footprints, multiple footprints. Why aren't there any bones or remains found from these thylacines? I've never heard of anyone finding a skull or... Mm, that's true, and I mean, it's the same reason that they never found um, any of the convicts who tried to escape from Macquarie Harbour, you know, because we've got the Tassie Devils, and yeah, they'll eat, true. eat yeah. the meat, and then they'll even dissolve all the bones, they'll, they'll chew it all up. We saw firsthand in this video, actually, Tasmanian devils ripping apart a wallaby carcass and they left nothing, left yeah. no bones. So if a Tasmanian tiger did die out there, there's no way they're gonna let that go, go to waste. To waste no. yeah. So what makes you believe that they are still alive? I don't know if I believe that they are, but I have hope. Um, and I, what makes me think that is that there hasn't really been a lot of searches um, in the modern day that have gone out and dedicated time to try to find thylacines. They've always been rare, they've always been elusive. Even when they were like around in their good numbers, they were rarely seen. You know, they were afraid of people. They um, kept to themselves. And there's always that thought in the back of my mind that if they were still around somewhere on the Southwest coast or somewhere remote, um, even if you were in the area, you could still not see them. So the best case scenario would be there's small pockets, small areas of land that may hold a small population of these tigers. I guess that's the idea, yeah. If there was any chance, it would have to be in these small pockets that haven't really been disturbed, where they've been able to continue existing, hidden away from man. So if I want to go on an expedition to try and get one on camera like so many people have done before, what area of Tasmania should I be looking in? Well, I would recommend the same as where I kind of went, which was in the southwest. Uh, I spent nine days doing a trip down there, set up some trail cams, there was a nice big beach to try to get footprints and whatnot, and there were sightings there, um, you know, in the 30s, the 50s. Somewhere that's got game, somewhere that's got, you know, wallabies that they can eat, somewhere that's got hunting grounds. So the beach is really good hunting ground because animals will go out there unprotected. You know, those type of areas make sense. The main thing a tiger needs is the shelter and the game to survive. As long as it's got those two factors, like I don't see why it couldn't still exist. Mm. Maybe. Okay. Um... So we were living in this town called Maydina, which is between mm, between New Norfolk and Strathgordon. And Strathgordon is on the way, you go past Lake Pedder. Um, so it's deep into the southwest of Tassie. And 50 years ago, we lived up in the scrub, up on a hill in Maydina. Away from everybody, no houses, um, up behind a, a mountain range. It was a Winter was a flaming, freezing, all but snowing um, night. Wind was blowing, it was howling. 
um, and we had a little pup uh, golden lab and this little pup just was going off its tree literally freaking out and over the kitchen sink was a small window with the latch that you opened out and Bruce said oh what on earth is that dog barking at and I opened the window I said oh there's a weird looking dog out there he said what do you mean a weird looking dog and I said well it's got this weird tail its tail was straight and it had stripes on its back and Bruce shot up like a and by the time Bruce got up this thing was sauntering it was up a bit of a driveway it was on a bit of a rise and the, and the bush is directly behind us we're surrounded by bush and it just sauntered no no fastness just sauntered back up our driveway and disappeared into the bush. It was a blizzard and yeah, we, this down. this mountain range behind us, what I want to tell you, is was called the Tiger Range. So how long ago was that? 51 years ago. 72, right. Well, so living in, uh, in long Bush, after that one. It's long after yeah. it, it is long after it, but they're such an elusive creature that yeah. they will just live in obscurity mm. for, and who knows how long. You know, they're not seen. Yeah. So let's talk about timeline. Benjamin, the last Tasmanian tiger, died in 1936. And another one hasn't been found since that point. But the thing is, they were seen. Like the story that we just heard, that was from the 70s, nearly 40 years after Benjamin died. So the real question is, when did the last Tasmanian tiger die? And the thing is, we don't know. Over the past few days, gathering knowledge about these Tasmanian tigers and learning about them, them, I've really gotten to understand how sad this actually is that humans killed something as beautiful as the Tasmanian tiger for money But I don't think it's good to focus on that as much as we can focus on the animals that are still alive and do need our help like the Tasmanian devils which live here in this part of Tasmania. We can't focus on being angry at something that happened in the past like that. Let's focus on what we do have now. So in this part of the video, what we're gonna be doing is going to find some species that used to live alongside these thylacines back in the day. So we started our search at East Coast Nature World to film the Tasmanian devil. Have a look at him, here's another one running in right here. We are witnessing something so cool right now. We've just come to this little sanctuary and we're working with these little Tasmanian devils. They're a bit distracted by the carcass, which is why I can get this close to them at the moment. But this is so cool. This is my first time seeing Tasmanian devils in person. And they're awesome. Whoa! <laughs> these guys are absolutely amazing. And there's a fair few of them coming in right here. So this is the largest carnivorous marsupial in the world. And what they're doing right now is what, exactly the same as they'd be doing out in the wild. So Tasmania is the only place you can see wild Tasmanian devils today, but about 3,000 years ago, they actually used to live over on the mainland. But tragically, over here in Tasmania, in the 90s, it was discovered that there was a facial tumor disease that came through and wiped out a lot of the population. But yeah, just having this experience with these Tasmanian devils is so cool. Let's watch them tear apart the rest of this carcass. The devil facial tumor disease is a big thing um, with these guys. Um, so actually how it came about, it was a genetic mutation. So one devil was randomly born with it and then it's just spread like, spread like crazy. Um, so it's actually spread through blood and through saliva. And because these guys are what we call communal feeders, means they feed in groups. Um, so they're sharing the same carcass. Yeah, they keep me on my toes, that's for sure. Oi. <laughs> so yeah, she's the cranky one. As you can see. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, they have little arguments, little fights, as we sort of saw earlier. Um, and they give each other nicks and wounds, and it just gets infected like that. <laughs> um, it, doesn't, it doesn't actually kill them by breaking down their immune system. 
it actually kills them by growing these facial tumors on their face that grow so big it stops them from eating. Right. So how can people help out these devils? Yeah, so a way to help out um, is to donate to the Devil uh, Save the Devil program. So that's a big big program to save these guys um, and they always appreciate donations. And when the Tasmanian tiger thylacines used to live here, yep. they would have eaten these devils as well. Yeah, so these, the thylacines was the, the only predator in Tassie that could take down a whole wallaby or a possum um, and also could take down these guys. So that was one of their, their predators, uh, but since the extinction of that, obviously they're, they're pretty safe from, from other animals. I think that's a great way to end it. right here is one of the species that we were looking for over here in Tassie. Now we've just done this walk up into the mountains and this right here is the beautiful native wombat. Take a look at him. But if the myths are true, and these thylacines do still exist out in the forests of Tasmania, it means that they've been hiding away from humans for over 80 years. And if I want to find one, there's no point in me looking in a place where humans are because the tigers won't be there. Next week, I'm going to be heading out into the forest of Tasmania as far as I can into the southwest trying to find one of these thylacines. And the more I thought about filming these thylacines, if I did get one on camera, I know it's a crazy thought, should I even post this footage? Because the amount of poachers, the amount of people that would go out to this area and try and track it down, if I did get one on camera, would be terrible for this species if it is alive. And that made me think, what if the people who have done these searches before did find one? There is no way that they would tell the public. But who knows, that's just my thought process on it anyways. Let's find one first and then think about all that stuff after. <laughs> we're waiting for the sun to go down at the moment and then we're gonna head to the east coast of Tasmania, link up with some mates who do awesome work with an aquatic species of bird who currently are way out on the continental shelf feeding and then they'll swim in as it's getting dark. The little blue penguin. The tigers would have eaten these guys along the coastline back in the day as well. Let's go. So we're just out here tonight at Bishino Penguin Tours and you can see the coast down there. That is where these penguins are actually nesting. So we've met up with a couple of the boys. They're gonna take us through, show us some penguins tonight. This is my first time ever seeing penguins. This is so awesome. I'm so keen to see this species in person. And yeah, let's go meet the boys. Boys, how are we? How are you? Welcome to Bishino Penguin Tours. Keen to see how some birds tonight. Good, good. Just over a week, Kurt flies out and then I've got a week to myself, so. There we go, little blue penguin. So what we're gonna be doing is waiting here after dark, waiting for these penguins to return from the sea. Then we're gonna see them coming back up here into their little homes. What are they out there doing at the moment? So these guys, they go out to the continental shelf each day and that's roughly 18 kilometers from here, pretty much just straight out. And the continental shelf is just their feeding ground. There's just more food over there. So nice. every day they're going 18 kilometers out there yep. feeding and then coming back here at night. Exactly right. Yep. Over and over. Over and over again, pretty yep. much all year round. And that wooden box that we saw that penguin in just before, that's what they're living in. And there's also a couple natural homes around this facility. They're still out there at the moment. They're coming back in soon. So just down, coming out of the water right now, are these little blue penguins. It's so cool to finally see this species in person that have just come from that big trip 
out at sea. And what they're doing now is they're doing something called pruning. So they're picking all the sea lice off of them, getting ready, and in a minute, they'll come up this little path right here and up into those boxes where they'll sleep for the night. So we're just gonna wait here, be a bit quiet, and watch these penguins come up. So I love making these videos. Here's to a life of adventure, music, nature, beautiful people, travel, and hopefully thylacines as well. I really appreciate all the support that you always give me on my videos. I appreciate the comments and everything. And if you do want to support me and see more of my videos, I'm back into it now. I'm going to be posting videos every single week. So leave a like comment down below and subscribe to this channel to see more adventures like this. This has been the investigation. I've learned so much about these animals. Next week is the expedition where we go find one. If you have any tips of finding one or you've seen one of these guys recently, let me know in the comments below. And yeah, take care legends. I'll see you guys next week. Cheers.